Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Eid Mubarak to all you wonderful people out there. I'm your host Ahmed Nawaz and it has been a fantastic day so far for all of you who are here in Pakistan, who are away from Pakistan, whoever is celebrating Eid today, a very happy Eid Mubarak to you and your loved ones. I hope that this day has been as blessed as it has been for most of us. And of course, like I always say that uh, celebrate Eid responsibly. So I hope that you've uh, you know, done all your religious obligations of sacrifice and uh, for those of you who haven't done it, you still have day two and day three. But I'm sure that uh, as we will be approaching the evening, there will be a lot of fantastic barbecues and a lot of good food, a lot of uh, family gatherings, friends and loved ones who will be together. All of this will be going on. So like I said, uh, like every year, we're going to be talking to some very wonderful people, knowing their stories, how Eid has evolved over the years as well. You know, we want to talk about the fact that it's probably not the same. Uh, things do get special every year, but uh, that's what life is, isn't it? So there are some people who are not there anymore. Of course, we still cherish them in our memories. Uh, some uh, who have recently joined the family, they're also uh, something that we cherish. But all in all, it's all about uh, sacrifice, not of the animal, but I think of our egos as well. And like I always say on every Eid, on every religious occasion, that the first goal has to be to forgive everyone around you. I think we're too you know, aggressive these days with how life has become. So I hope that all of you have gotten this chance to make peace with people you've not been able to talk to, and especially the fact that, uh, you know, you're forgiving people. I think that's the true, because everybody remembers the animal, nobody remembers the entire story of sacrifice. So I guess that's something that we all need to teach our younger generations as well, and of course celebrate the true essence of sacrifice on this Eid al-Adha. So we'll be talking to this very, uh, you know, uh, esteemed panel that has joined us and will be knowing their area of expertise and how they've been celebrating Eid as well. So first of all, I'm very honored to be joined in studios by Dr. Koker. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Eid Mubarak. Wa alaikum salam and khair mubarak to you, Amazal. Thank you very much for having us here today. Sir, it's great to have you. Thank you very much for joining. And we've also been joined by somebody who's, of course, now a regular feature of our Eid broadcast always. And we always uh, tend to ask him what he's been eating, how he's been going around. But he's always got that magical uh, bicycle that he tends to use and, you know, burn all those calories. But I, I do say one thing, that with each passing year, things have changed and Harun Bhai has gotten younger. And I mean this with <laughs> all true heart. Joining us is Mr. Harun General. Assalamu alaikum. Eid Mubarak, sir. How are you, Harun Bhai? Alhamdulillah. It's, uh, it's lovely to be here. Thank you for inviting me again, that is. Always a pleasure having you. I think on every Eid, it gets special when you've got Harun Bhai with you as well. Also, we've been joined uh, by... Uh, somebody who happens to be an educationist and of course uh, she can highlight better what Eid means because uh, you know people from this part of uh, the professional field are always busy. So I'm sure even on Eid they're thinking about what's next but at the same time I'm sure they've got time to spend with their loved ones as well and still do because day two and day three are still to go. So Ms. Hajra is also joining us. Assalamu alaikum ma'am Eid Mubarak. Jee wa alaikum as -salam. Thank you so much for having me here. How are you? I'm wonderful as always. <laughs> as always. I'm sure. I'm sure Eid. It gets to be even more special. We've also been joined by somebody uh, who says adventure is his middle name. And we've uh, been told that he loves the mountains and the bike. <coughs> and once these two are combined, then uh, it's Nirvana achieved for him. So also joining us is Mr. Kamran. Assalamu alaikum, Eid Mubarak, sir. Wa alaikum Thank you for having us. Sir, how are you? Uh, Alhamdulillah, great. Has Eid been adventurous for you so far? Yeah, it's, it's always been. It always has been. <laughs> well, that, that's great to know as well. Uh, but first of all, I think just to get the conversation uh, started, uh, Dr. Koka, sir, over the years, many things have changed. Uh, like I said, we evolve every year. Times have changed as well. Uh, if we turn the clock back and go back to ages, uh, how would you say it has evolved over the years? And how have you seen it change through your lifetime? It's a great change, G. Uh, MSF, uh, I recall when we were younger, Eid, uh, Eids and other occasions like this used to be uh, times for family gatherings mm -hmm. and I recall a uh, gathering of families and cousins that are at grandparents houses that was <laughs> that used to be the real uh, you know uh, occasion where uh, we would gather from all over the country basically and the two three days spent at the grandparents running around <laughs> with other kids and uh, you know no not a care in the world at all actually that was the best time there was really mm -hmm. i think now things have become a little bit uh, busier perhaps families don't get so much time to get together so the same uh, same sense doesn't seem to be there uh, mm -hmm. i suppose but people enjoy different ways so now uh, 
uh, families are smaller, they are more compact and they are enjoying in their own way. Absolutely. I think mm. the, the, the most uh, wonderful part of Eid for many people had, had been and still is their grandparents' house because I don't know why people find an escape over there. It's like, you know, they've been captured by some entity and they're <laughs> getting an escape over there. But I think grands, uh, gr grand, how our granddads and gr grandmoms love us is something beyond that, what, you know, what you receive from your parents. That's mm. why you feel more special. Harun, has it been the same for you? Do you remember those times with grandparents? Well, actually, the thing is, it's basically the grandparents are the next higher authority. Uh -huh. So, and they <laughs> love you more. So what happens is, you can actually go directly to them and your parents can't say anything uh, to so you. So get a suo moto over there. Exactly. <laughs> so that's the beauty of it. Of and uh, I think that's what uh, generally kids love. And mm -hmm. that's why they love their grandparents and they like to go to them. And because they know if they say it, the parents can't <laughs> say no to it. So, you know, the ice creams and the, uh, all the junk food, mm -hmm. you know, the, uh, the baraf kagola, you know, yeah. all those kind of stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. you, the kids love and parents generally say you can't have it. And uh, grandparents say you can. Say, oh, yeah, yeah, you can. Oh, it's easy, then you can have it. Mm. And there are times to give them. The but once you become a parent, you understand the real aspect. Oh, obviously. <laughs> obviously. That's the story of our lives. <laughs> when the roles change and you realize, oh, that's why our parents used to do this to us. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the scenario. But we definitely remember that. And uh, I think, uh, as Dr. Saab uh, uh, correctly put it, uh, the families have actually grown so big and they've moved. Um, uh, across the country and it's not that the, the grandparents are just two now it's basically multiple grandparents multiple mm -hmm. families so it's a little difficult for them and uh, busier yes and everyone wants to uh, meet everyone and there are a lot more contacts now uh, friends and everyone wants to meet everyone so you know uh, the time is short so we're trying to gather around and you know and as much short of time we're trying to and especially with this Eid uh, you've got the Qurbani in the morning and mm. once you're done with that, so you, your time also lessens. Mm. I so mean, it, it, time is, uh, is rapid now, so you can't keep track of it. You haven't been able to over the years, but uh, especially on Eid, you know, you suddenly realize that, oh, it's the third day and it's going over as well. That's how quickly Eid passes now. But I think the, the routine that we've been involved in the whole year has a lot to say, uh, you know, uh, whether we, we will be able to enjoy Eid with family. Some people are still on duty. Some people still don't get holidays to celebrate Eid with family. Some people are probably, you know, late in, in getting holidays or they t tend to reach afterwards. Some people who are part of the essential services, as we say. So that's very important that we also honor and remember those, those people as well. Uh, Ms. Hajra, this generational gap that we always talk about in society and this evolution, you know, from the Eid card to text messages to a point now where kids don't even want to leave their room. How have you seen Eid evolving over the years? I think um, the one thing where the grandparents and the parents are on the same page is when they tell their children to stop looking at the mobile <laughs> and start focusing on them. Because these, are day these days, like I remember when I was young, I was so excited about Eid. I took out my dress, my bangles, everything was mm. prepared for the next day. Couldn't, I was excited to wake up early in the morning, wear those clothes, you know. But kids these days are not actually as excited as mm. we used to be. And that's all because of um, the technology that they are in right now and the kind of uh, exposure that they have. And I think that this gap is huge. I used to consider a gap between me and my mother, but I think that wasn't a huge gap. But now when I look at my own children and I look at the children that I teach, um, they are in the 21st century, to be honest. We still like to be in the 19th century, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but I think um, we're trying our level best, like this generation is trying their level best to understand them as well, as well as their parents. Their parents. I think uh, with us, um, we've been hit hard. And we're stuck in um, the middle. <laughs> we're stuck in the middle. We have to please our parents and we have to please <laughs> our children as well, whereas our parents never did give a damn that they had mm. to please us. Yes. They never had to. Mm. But we have to please our children as well because now there are so many things like the anxieties and the, mm -hmm. the problems that the children are facing, especially when it comes down to um, drugs and the kind of exposure that they have mm -hmm. in their educational systems. You have to be with them. So yeah, I think there's a tremendous change when it comes down to this age, mm -hmm. uh, our children and what we were. Uh, Absolutely. That, that, that's wonderfully put. I think that's just one of the challenges that we see across society nowadays is to create that balance uh, for the next generation and you know how they can connect with their roots as well, something that you should never forget. I think our generation, as far as we were concerned, uh, were always the ones who could still connect with our roots. But this next one that we see uh, tends to be with the use of technology and diversity tends to be a bit far. Uh, that ownership of your, of your roots isn't there anymore. Uh, so, Professor Kamran, Mr. So. Adventure, 
how how do you celebrate eid and uh, how have you seen it like everybody's talking about this evolution what do you believe yeah eid is actually always the occasion where uh, it's actually a socializing time mm -hmm. with the families and stuff it's uh, this this one thing stays the same uh, for the last many years mm -hmm. uh, but the thing is as haja has put it very nicely that we are living in a very strange times uh, it's actually uh, evolution uh, you know we are translating from one phase to another and we are in between so we are trying to uh, make sure that the next generation actually it, uh, it kind of uh, you know we want to keep them connected with uh, with the things that we have done in our uh, youth you know uh, and uh, in addition uh, you know mm -hmm. the, the technology technology that has technology. but technology kamran would i think always be a part of our life so you can't change you know for example if i always ask this question that if somebody said that you know we never had mobiles of course you didn't they weren't invented in yeah, that yeah, type for that, example that, that, but now the kids do have it so do you think that do, we need to create an environment where we can balance these things instead of just creating yeah, the a chaos around the balance is important mm -hmm. we have to make sure that uh, the next generation they uh, it they actually use it wisely mm -hmm. or you you know uh we have to keep it uh in a very balanced manner mm -hmm. that's very important i think uh, controlling it to an extent where uh, it's not suppression and at the same time that you know you have a control over it is something very important something that i think especially new parents uh, in this generation need to learn that instead of just suppressing them because it's eventually going to come out so the the, be the better thing to do is to create a balance around it yes use technology but use it responsibly as well uh, so docs up uh, family uh, grandparents as you mentioned then extended family i still remember scores of people even distributing meat used to be a festival uh, now unfortunately people have become less as well uh, of course some people have passed away some are not there in the country anymore uh, this festival of distributing meat also has become somewhat of a chore which people consider now instead of celebrating it right right yes i agree with you however one uh, one must not lose sight of the fact that uh, as you rightly said earlier that uh, uh, it's not sacrifice of the animal mm -hmm. it's sacrifice of your own self and uh, and uh, as essence really of eat is sharing isn't it so uh, uh, distribution of the meat and all that but uh you may think of it as a chore but uh, of course it is part of uh, our uh, culture it mm -hmm. is part of our uh, uh, thought processes and uh, we must keep in mind all those people who do not have access to mm -hmm. uh, good nutrition good uh, uh, food the rest of the year mm -hmm. and uh, keep that sense with us obviously mm -hmm. uh earlier when we were talking about uh, these uh, Uh, modern electronic devices and things that I'd like to go on to that a little bit if you mm. don't mind please sir because as uh, a doctor and I'm an orthopedic surgeon mm -hmm. so I see increasing numbers of younger people coming with neck pain and back pain mm -hmm. and I find the cause of that to be too much usage of these uh, screen based devices uh, and uh, as was rightly uh, said just before that it's moderation that is necessary is teaching responsible usage of these devices that is necessary and uh, uh children need to be taught that these are not the world itself <laughs> they are just a window onto yes. the world and the world is <laughs> outside world <laughs> is actually <laughs> out there uh, and they need to be taught to go out and play in the uh, in the outside environment uh, which is what we used to do as children mm -hmm. of course there are more attractions now inside on these <laughs> screens <laughs> yes, but uh, they need to be taught responsibly that you know the real world is outside i think for so for, for for us the biggest <coughs> a uh, festival about eid ul adha was going there and selecting an animal with our parents yeah, with our yes. father with our brothers mm -hmm. and all that used to be a whole experience for us to, you know go to the cattle market uh, bargain search for an animal and then bring it back and then brag about it that was probably the most favorite sport <laughs> of every child growing quite up quite right quite right that, right. that was very yeah. yes sir it's it's yeah. not just that you go select it it's mm. basically once you selected it you go around the neighborhood parading it, parading <laughs> it. Yeah. so that's the thing We, like uh, my kids mm. now they've got the animals going mm. around and they've been out the whole week mm -hmm. you know taking the animals get, getting it food 
And actually, that is something that it has to be there because that is what g uh, creates an affiliation to that animal. Mm -hmm. And once that affiliation develops, that is very important mm -hmm. and that is what uh, teaches them to sacrifice. Yes. Because once the animal is sacrificed, we felt the loss. When, mm -hmm. uh, when, when we used to yeah. do that, we used to say, oh, it's yeah. slaughtered. And then we said, okay. Some of us stayed in the room crying for hours. Exactly. Just because of that. exactly. Uh, I remember uh, many of my cousins, they couldn't even look at it. And they mm -hmm. said, we don't want to look at it. They just went away. So, uh, you know, so that actually teaches. And that is something that has to be learned through this. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, you know, this, uh, the, f the sacrifice. And uh, again, it's not just Eid al it's the start. And... Uh, what actually we can do is, once you have that feeling, you keep that going in the kids. And you, um, every month you try to do something that brings that feeling of sacrifice more so that they start learning the, uh, you know, the sharing aspect. Mm -hmm. They start learning that, okay, something that they love has to be sacrificed in the name of God. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, these kind of things they have to learn. So th this is something that has to be a continuous effort. And um, as you said about technology, I would say uh, ev every time has its evils, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, everything has its pros and cons. Mm. So you have to see how you can use it best because uh, as uh, Hajjab was saying, the gap, because the gap is increasing uh, so fast because technology is increasing exponentially. Mm -hmm. uh, things that people thought will happen in 2050 are happening right, right now. now. Yes. So, uh, we don't know how fast the technology is going to go. And uh, uh, to be very honest, a lot of things my kids are now telling me about, but this is there. And uh, again, my area of expertise was technology, but <laughs> again, they look at my room and say, no, this is. And I was like, oh, okay. So, and I'm learning from them now. Uh -huh. Because it's moving so fast, uh, you can't keep up with everything. Mm -hmm. So, um, again, you have to learn. And uh, as for young parents as well, I think they will have to learn a bit more how this technology and how to control it, moderate it, and make them understand. I think they're more glued to technology than their kids, the young parents. I think that's what's the, what's the catch here. Well, yes. Uh, <laughs> I, I see many a times the parents are on like this, <laughs> and the kids are like, please, yes. we want to do something. Mm -hmm. So I've seen that scenarios as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, once, actually, the kid sees this, so obviously, th he understands this. Uh, it's in his subconscious that, oh, this is something that's very that cool. That needs to be practiced. That yes. needs to be practiced. Mm -hmm. So they do it. So uh, the other day I was uh, listening to something and it said like lead by example. So we need to think that what should we be doing because if we start texting and we are on the phone all the time and uh, I see many times the TV is on, the mobile is on and uh, everyone sitting and going and the TV is running there. <laughs> so if a child this old comes in and he sees or she sees this, What's he going to learn? Mm -hmm. That is something that we have to, you know, work upon ourselves as well. So that it's not just the kids; it's us as well, mm -hmm. to a certain extent. Absolutely, I think that uh, lead by example, like like Harun said, should be the catch over here. So, Miss Hajra, growing up, were you the one uh, who was a bit shy to eat that meat, or were you the one who would stay in the room and you know probably? No, I was right next to my father mm -hmm. when the when the the, the was, was being slaughtered. Wow! And uh, enjoying it. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, having a barbecue in uh, the evening and consuming well. that, yes. So, we, it was a festive because my, I have two elder brothers. Mm -hmm. So, I was more like a tomboy mm -hmm. than a, a girly, girly sort mm -hmm. of a girl. So, yeah, I used to enjoy Somebody that. Somebody wanted thought. to slaughter the animal yes, yourself, Yes, right? unfortunately. <laughs> but it reminded me, uh, when my eldest was six years old, he named the goat Sloppy. Mm -hmm. So, the, my middle one, he, he loves to tease my eldest uh, as much as he mm -hmm. can. So, he it's was about to have his first... Mm. Um, s um, uh, first uh, bite. S bite and mm. he said you're eating sloppy by the way <laughs> and <laughs> tears roll down his eyes and he's like I'm not gonna have this <laughs> <laughs> yeah that this affiliation is very very important but you know I won't say that we have become evil even uh, this time I, I remember my kids naming naming the goat and you know just asking me if we can feed the goat rice or something like that and all I wanted to tell them is that, no, we can't feed him rice, but he can be fed into rice <laughs> and be fed to us. So this is something I wanted to tell them, but God, I refrain. It's very interesting that, you know, we open up this argument. So, uh, Kamran, I'm sure that you're a meat lover as well. Yeah, of course. So the, over the years, it has been nothing away from meat, I'm sure. Yeah, we can, meat is the first thing. Meat yeah. is the first thing that yeah. you get. get Ka Kamran is very satisfied with the fact that, you know, meat is the first thing that we have. <laughs> that's, that's the thing you love about Adventure Seekers. But, but sir, uh, as, a, as a professional doctor yourself, 
and uh, because times have been very strange due to uh, a pandemic and everything that has happened. Do you also believe that people now, uh, from your area of expertise, have become more serious about their uh, health than they were before, before this pandemic, uh, in terms of what they're eating and what they're doing now, especially meat? Yes, I guess you're right there. I think one thing that the pandemic has shown us is that life can be short mm. and life uh, and one has to take it seriously. You can't take it casually. So uh, people, I think, are looking more after their health. They're wanting to get out more. I think if you, mi you might have noticed in the pandemic, there were loads of people coming out on the roads and going for walks and things which we had not seen before. Mm -hmm. And cycling, as, <laughs> yes. as a matter of fact, <laughs> was one activity that had uh, uh, mushroom like anything. Yes, sir. the cost went quite up of, of bicycles. went quite up. <laughs> bicycles were not available in the, uh, e even in the uh, production factories mm -hmm. and also. So I think, yes, people uh, got to realize that health is important and it needs to be looked after. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and it's something that we all have to uh, have to do to take care of ourselves. Uh, eating meat, uh, yes, it's part of our culture, it's part of our diet. Uh, but as, as uh, uh, is always said correctly, that everything in moderation. Mm -hmm. So uh, a, balance something. A, a balanced diet is always mm -hmm. the best uh, for, for your health. And therefore, all food groups need to be incorporated mm. into our diet, not just meat. Of course, Absolutely. Because, I, I, I yeah. see too many vegans around me. So, you know, I tend mm. to g get a bit scared. I think you need to have that, like Sir mentioned, that that balance is very, very important. But he's right. Obviously, you understand that cycling bit, that how it went up, how the prices. Uh, I, mm. I mean, your numbers increase exponentially, the people who were yes. cycling with you. Yes, actually, uh, the number of cyclists, uh, you know, uh, if we were 10, now we were 1,000. <laughs> so it went up like that. And uh, as Dr. Sub mentioned, uh, it went world over, mm -hmm. and uh, the factories weren't able to supply. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were not able to manufacture. And uh, the supplies, uh, people who've been working in the industry for so long, they said, in the last 100 years, we've never seen something like this. Mm -hmm. And the industry has never seen mm -hmm. something like this, that uh, we have to meet these as kind of demands. And to be honest, uh, it took about two and a half years for the industries to actually settle and bring the supplies to balance. Mm -hmm. To the demand, yes. To the demand. Mm -hmm. Because in, uh, in 2023, we were like, OK, now the demands are matching up with the uh, supply mm -hmm. because otherwise you know the demand and supply was not matching but up. there was a silver lining particularly for Islamabad we've talked about that that Islamabad actually became a bicycle city because oh, we yes. saw cycle lanes and just recently we saw uh, specific dedicated parking spaces mm -hmm. for cycles as well yeah actually Islamabad is one of the cities where you can very easily have this and uh, you see a lot of examples in uh, European countries mm -hmm. that they've actually closed their highways and they've actually made them bicycle friendly and we are actually working with the, the current uh, authorities as well when we're trying to actually create spaces where you actually can't go in like mm -hmm. one of the things we've been discussing is like uh, shakar Parnia, we develop it in a manner that you close it from all sides and you can only use electric cars mm -hmm. that are obviously uh, on the route and you can use bicycles or you can walk around and you develop different activities over there, mm -hmm. not just cycling, you have running activities, you have uh, parks for kids where you sit around mm -hmm. and like Saturday, Sundays is like a car free zone and uh, people go there. So uh, these are the things that can very easily happen and uh, uh, for Islamabad because it has most of the year it's very nice to cycle in mm -hmm. and uh, frankly speaking uh, if you want to go from one sector to the next it takes less time on a bicycle than in a car. Than in a car, true. So mm -hmm. uh, it makes perfect sense and it's good for the economy, it's good for the health, and it's good for the earth as well mm -hmm. because uh, the carbon emissions and everything. So uh, in the pandemic actually when we used to go out and uh, we used to go up the hill and we used to look at Islamabad and it was, you know, green deserted. and <laughs> deserted, yes, but the nature was coming back. The nature was coming back. Yes. It was green. There was no smog. There was no nothing. Mm. So that is something we should strive for. And uh, yes, uh, a lot of people think, no, no, the car is easy. It's an easy way out. But I think that's the way to go because on the whole, uh, uh, it's a simple fact that if you cycle for 30 minutes a day, mm. Uh, your, the risk of heart attack or any cardiovascular disease goes down by 50%. And that is easy cycling. I'm not saying competition-wise mm. or anything. 
So if something helps you this much, you should definitely do it. Absolutely. So you know, I was going to come to a point where you're distributing meat by bicycles as well. Well, actually, come to that point. No, <laughs> there are there are there are actually people who do that, mm. and uh, we've uh, we've designed a few things as well. <laughs> but uh, you know, obviously in Pakistan, a lot of people are like, no, no, we can't do it in shalwar kameez and everything. <laughs> like <that. laughs> but I know uh, Arun is one of the, those people who loves it on Eid because obviously with the amount of less traffic, particularly in Islamabad, you get to have all of Islam about yourself while you're cycling. So I think that's one activity that people tend to really uh, enjoy. Uh, but especially because you come, uh, Ajra, from the education background, you, you guys are absolutely glued to your professional work and I understand how much effort goes into this education field. This might be a time for uh, a lot of you to you know, calm yourselves as well, have a bit of yes. outdoor nature. Or are you still thinking about the next planner or the next something that you've got to achieve? Well, we're very fortunate. You see, we have two months as a summer break. Mm. So one month is for us to relax mm. because, to be honest, yes, if you are very serious when it comes to education, it's a 24-7 job. Yes. Just in the morning, I received a call from a mother mm -hmm. and she had certain complaints about a certain teacher because mm. of the summer pack that she received. And so I was dealing with that. <laughs> But the thing is that um, in Pakistan, we really need to focus on education because that is one thing that has lagged behind terribly. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the whole idea with the teachers is that they get a good break, that is one month break, and the second month, which is July, they get back to the system mm -hmm. and they start working for the new year. Yeah. So I think we're very fortunate over there that at least mm -hmm. we get two months off uh, yes. this way. So fortunately, I think yeah. because there are still summer camps in between which become really, you yes, know, so... Yes, but so uh, the area that I work in, because mm -hmm. I work for Punjab, yes. so uh, they have explicitly told all the private institutions that they no do not have camps. any summer, yes. uh, summer camps, or, which I'm very happy about. Mm -hmm. I think children should spend some time with their fathers, with their mothers, mm -hmm. with their grandparents, yes. and then come back to the system. I really want this to go on record in all my yeah. social media <laughs> timelines as well. I've been actually <laughs> pleading this fact that, you know, I understand that uh, summer camps and all the fun activities should be there, but this is that one time spent with your family, you know, get that bonding. Let them have some proper sleep and us too. <laughs> so I think <laughs> that that's very important. Uh, but coming to uh, particularly to the each side as well, uh, Kamran, uh, uh, adventure biking or mountain biking as you mentioned as well. Yeah. Islamabad particularly becomes a very, very special place for you. In fact, Islamabad is one of the best cities in the, in the whole country mm -hmm. where you can do so many things. Mm -hmm. uh, cycling. It's not just uh, road cycling. We we are actually we used to cover those off-road tracks uh, around mm -hmm. in the hills and stuff. So there are so many options here. Uh, most of them, most of the tracks, most of the so many adventure tracks. They most of the people they don't know about them. Mm -hmm. Unexplored so, tracks. Yeah, they are totally unexplored. Mm -hmm. So we like to go out there. They are actually good because uh, they are actually away from the all the pollution of mm. this city you know uh, the one, one of the problems we are facing in the mm. last few years is increasing air pollution here mm -hmm. so still we we uh, like to cycle on the roads but uh, in the re recent years so the it's th becoming very, very there are a lot of numbers when it comes to uh, uh, you know people who are using bicycles on road that's a big number like harun mentioned yeah. what about mountain biking as well do you have good yeah, numbers mountain there biking is uh, for the last few years it's, uh, the numbers are increasing yeah mm -hmm. Uh, people are actually the more exposure they are seeing on the social media. That's that's one thing mm -hmm. where you you get uh, the information. Uh, people are coming into this, yeah. And people, the main thing uh, with off-road cycling is like uh, they are very uh, you know sophisticated in mountain mm -hmm. bikes. So nowadays there are some very high-end bikes available mm -hmm. here as well. So people are going into you know. Actually, you know, in mountain biking, what generally happens is uh, you get to places and you take a picture and then you put it on. Mm. And people tend to ask you, where is this? And you say, Islamabad. <laughs> they say, yeah. where in Islamabad? <laughs> and then you say, it's right next to this place. And they mm. say, no, we've been there a thousand times. We never saw this. Mm. Because it's like, you know, you hardly go a few hundred meters inside and you've got such beautiful places. Mm -hmm. And that's generally what happens in mountain biking. You know, uh, we recently uh, built a track. We got a uh, track built in. And uh, we had the chairman CDA company us, and when he went in, he said, "I've never seen this side of the city, mm -hmm. and it was like you're going into the green, and you uh, everything is you know so nature. You you've got the birds going. We we saw a fox, you know, crossing there, just like that. Mm -hmm. So you know these kind of stuff. When you actually experience that, and uh, once you see these, 
then you say, oh, and you have that connection as well. And you uh, feel better because uh, the human eye can actually um, uh, see maximum colors of green. And green actually calms you mm -hmm. as a because it is naturally for us. Mm -hmm. So once you go into the green, it gives you the calm and the mm -hmm. peace that you need. You can imagine how much calm we get. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the, uh, this is a different kind <laughs> of <laughs> <a calm. laughs> But it's very interesting because for that, like you mentioned, people need to actually go on foot or on a bicycle and explore that nature. Yes. It's not like using a petrol or a diesel car and going all the way up to the mountain, seeing it for half an hour and then coming back. Exactly. Uh, you've got d different trails going up. It's not just cycling. It's uh, you've got trail three, trail four, and mm. uh, people generally know these tr uh, trail. Trail five three and five is most famous. Yes, yes, most famous. Mm. You've got one, two, three, four, five, mm. six, seven. So, th and then there are smaller trails as well, and sm which have not been marked. And uh, there are trails over there. So once you go on these trails, and you tend to see so many things, and uh, so many places, and uh, so many sceneries, and obviously. Every time you go there and uh, it's the different day, uh, time of the day, you see a different scenario. Mm -hmm. And especially close to sunrise or sunset, amazing. amazing. Amazing, absolutely. And I think that that's one part of Islamabad that all of you who are the residents over here or who get to visit need to enjoy. I think it's not just about, like I said, taking a car all the way up to a very famous point and just seeing the beauty for half an hour and coming back. But exploring yourself, you know, connecting with nature is something very important. Uh, Docs, a uh, particular question I like to ask people on Eid is, one of your most fondest memories growing up, up till now, if you see your life, what is the, that one best memory that you cherish about Eid al and always gets you excited? I think, again, it's uh, visiting grandparents' house uh, in Lahore, mm -hmm. where all the cousins used to get together. That would be the magical time because mm -hmm. no responsibilities, school <laughs> is out, uh, parents are busy with their parents and mm -hmm. therefore the children are not being supervised <laughs> very much and you can run around and wreak havoc as much as you like. All the time to uh, yourself. I think that was the best time. And is there one Nothing dreadful like scary that. moment that you remember of Eid ul Azha ever with the Eid. animal running away, anything like that that you'd, you'd recall? <laughs> I don't actually recall anything. So like yeah, he's been one of the safe uh, ones, I guess. So, you know, a, lo a lot of people these days I see losing animals and then animals <laughs> ending up in coffee shops and then coming out. But you know, that is another. Uh, Arun, uh, same question. One of the most fondest memories. Fondest? Well, I actually agree. It's basically when we used to go to the family house mm -hmm. and uh, everyone used to come from all over. Yeah. And then uh, going for uh, namaz and everyone's together. Mm -hmm. You know, because uh, the entire family, the, you go as a group and you go pray namaz, come back and then it's... So th that is something that is the fondest memory, I would say. Uh, the scariest, yes, I remember losing <laughs> an animal, yes, that's, <laughs> that's there. But it didn't scare me that much. I mm -hmm. was like, oh, I know, I caught it maybe, that's why I didn't mm -hmm. scare it. But yeah, I, that probably would be the scariest because... The, the close the to scary. Close yeah. to scary yeah. because the feeling like, oh, if I lost it, oh, yeah. I'm going to record it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, you know, it, it has happened to some people and I still uh, know people who dread the moment that they, their animal runs away either at the time of being transported to their households or either when you know it's about to be sacrificed. Especially uh, people involved with the actual sacrifice tend to uh, gain a lot of adventure while they're doing it I'm sure. Mm -hmm. So I think that is there as well but Ajra for you as well one fondest memory that you remember and if there is any dreadful memory that you Collecting think Eidi mm -hmm. and then uh, Usually I used to wear gararas mm. on the Eid, so I used to get on my BMX, tie my garara, <laughs> and then go to the market, get all the stuff that I wanted mm -hmm. to have, the chocolates and mm -hmm. stuff. At that time, Jubilee was very famous, yes, by absolutely. the way. So we used to get those, but the dreadful moment was when my brother used to eat it up. Mm. And I, couldn't, yeah, I, I used to hide it, but he used to find it and used to eat it all up. Mm. That was the dreadful moment. <laughs> that, 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 Other than that, surely is. Yes. That, that surely is, but uh, uh, were you one of the lucky ones who received Eidi on both Eids or yes. just Eid al-Fitr? Yes, on both Eids. That, that's interesting. You know, I know very <laughs> less amount of people who have actually received Eidi on both Eids. And I think that, that gets uh, very special for them. But obviously, once you come to the receiving end, you tend to say only one Eid. But I think that shouldn't be the case. Kamran, uh, one uh, memory that you cherish? Uh, for me, actually, uh, the thing is, uh, we used to sacrifice goats most of the time, but uh, we were never the, you know, uh, we we never slaughtered ourselves. Mm -hmm. So uh, usually they you had professional butcher, people. Yeah, to professional help. people. Mm -hmm. We used to. One time there was, uh, I think there was shortage of butchers and mm -hmm. stuff, and 
we had to manage it ourselves. Mm -hmm. That was one very special experience for us. I'm sure so that was probably the most adventurous sacrifice yeah, you that, ever. That was <laughs> really, yeah. So that one moment I still mm. remember. And the scariest one, I think last year my son was actually, he took the goat a bit far from mm -hmm. home and then uh, he delivered a message home that something is wrong with the goat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's not moving. Yeah, it, it actually stopped and just uh, sat there. Mm -hmm. So we thought maybe there's something happened. Right? Mm -hmm. We might, might, might need to you know, lose that, so mm. that was one, but it was okay uh, mm. later on. It was just tired problem. Yeah, yeah. That <laughs> he actually uh, <laughs> uh, took him so far away from home mm -hmm. that he actually got tired. I'm because sure, I'm happened. sure the goat finally realized that yeah. this is as far as I can go <laughs> and maybe this kid yeah. now needs to take care of his own business. Yeah, but yeah. That, that's a very, very interesting, dreadful moment because it has happened. I still remember one time, uh, just, you know, recently, not even that far ago, one of, I, I had two goats that I was dragging around. So one of them actually got uh, its leg uh, caught up in this manhole and it actually fell and the leg got stuck. So I was of the opinion that this leg is broken now. So probably, you know, this I'm done with this. Mm. But, you know, thankfully we were able to pull it out. There were people who helped and it was okay. So, you know, you, because that connection with your animal is so strong and that sense of ownership that you tend to care for every bit, even if I think kids nowadays, if, if they're younger, they're so skeptical if that the animal is sitting for... 20 minutes, you know, trust me, my kids would come banging on my door, it's not moving. And I had to tell them that, look, it needs to sleep and relax as well. <laughs> so calm down. I think that is there. Uh, but also moving to the close of the program, uh, you mentioned something very special and that's what we try to teach everyone uh, whenever we're with the younger generations is honoring people who are from the less privileged sections of society and remembering Absolutely. them, not forgetting them. Regarding this, is there any message you'd like to give out to all the viewers watching you today, especially on Eid Ulaza? Uh, I would just like to say that, uh, uh, like you said, think of others less fortunate than you. Try and reach out and help out uh, as much as you can. Uh, as they say, always make sure your neighbor is not going hungry when you are being uh, feeding yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, and just look out for others as you would look out for yourself. Wonderful, wonderful. Harun, would you like to give out a message to all of your fans out there now? <laughs> I don't know if they're fans. <laughs> I know they are. <laughs> Well, actually, uh, I would like to say that uh, this Eid actually teaches of us of sacrifice and of sharing. So uh, we should actually remember that and not just the less fortunate, anyone can be in need. And uh, even if you think somebody who's not in need or is very privileged might need help in some other manner that he or she can't get himself. So try to think of people, what, uh, how you can help them. So that is something that uh, uh, this Eid also teaches us, you know, sharing, sacrificing, and it with everyone. Mm -hmm. And yes, obviously, the less, less privileged, they are the priority. But also think of others, we, because what happens is we might tend to forget people, and they might need something very small that can actually make a big difference in their mm -hmm. lives. So we should always remember the others. Absolutely. That's, that's wonderfully put as well. Haja, what would you like to say? Well, I was just thinking that there aren't any children amongst us, and... So I want to speak from their side. Mm -hmm. So once my, sa my son said that, what's the definition of underprivileged? So is, is it lack of money or is it lack of happiness? So I think even people who are from a background, they're poor, but they're happy in what they have. Mm -hmm. uh, we will be seeing richy rich people who are taking medicines um, because they have their anxiety issues, they cannot sleep properly. Mm -hmm. So we really need to understand what is the definition of mm -hmm. underprivileged. And um, I think uh, our traditions have taught us many ways to help those out, but I think we should also listen to how our children would like to now mm -hmm. help these people Absolutely. because they've got different ideas. Mm -hmm. And they want to come up with ideas which I think more effective and more productive Absolutely. than what we were doing uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, back in our time. So. Uh, I would just like to say I think now the parents should also listen to what the children have to say mm -hmm. and maybe if they w would like to create a new tradition absolutely. in the family, honor, honor that. I think then that's why not good. honor that and take that yes, forward. Yes, absolutely. I think that that's wonderfully put. At one time I think she's going to shut Doc Sub's business, <laughs> but she's, she's, <laughs> she's happily didn't do that. But I think that's very important. If, so, if your children are bringing up a new tradition or they want to start something new, and you think it's in the boundaries of your culture and your uh, rules and regulations of your household, then let it be. Kamran, uh, one message yeah, you'd like I'm to give I'm actually with. thinking about what Jasacha just said. Mm -hmm. It's really a very nice message. Uh, mm -hmm. We should actually uh, listen to kids and, uh, you know, 
the main thing is happiness is important. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and in addition to that, uh, you know, uh, these days uh, there are actually economy, eco mm -hmm. economic situ situation is also Absolutely. not very good. Absolutely. Tough times. We have to, we have to look for others. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, as much as possible. Absolutely. Well, that's wonderfully put as well. Uh, but Doc Saab, uh, Arun, uh, Ms. Ajra and Kamran, thank you very much to all of you. you. Once again, a very happy Eid Mubarak to all of you. Thank we get you. to, of course, uh, honor you as well. And you get to honor us every Eid as well. It's great to have you guys. But uh, Eid Mubarak to you and your families. And I wish you two more splendid days of Eid as well. Thank you very much to all of you for being on the show. Well, that does wrap up uh, the first day as well. But before we go, obviously, you've heard some very wonderful special messages. I'd like to say just one. And that is forgive, because I think for far too long we've been obsessed with what people are doing to us and how we can, you know, get back to them with so sort of a revenge attitude. But, you know, I'm always of the belief that once life ends and uh, you get to answer questions and answers that are put to you uh, in your final resting place, I think the first question would never, the, the question that is asked would never be that, okay, he did that, did you do the same? I think it would be that, okay, that person did that, but we honored you with sense. Could you do what you were told to uh, or not? So I think that is something very important. So forgive and forget and spread love all around and celebrate the remaining two days uh, with happiness as well from me and my entire team of PTV World and our entire families. Eid Mubarak. It's goodbye for now.